there is not a more exciting team to watch in the sport of basketball than Ohio State, and a huge reason why, J.C. Sheldon, here to talk about why it's happening, where she's come from, and where she's going. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win! You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball, and happy Wednesday. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, delighted to be joining you in between WNBA transactions, which has kept us very busy here in February as well. But of course, it is the heart of college basketball season. And so thank you for showing up for us yet again today, the way we show up for you six days a week. Over 175,000 of you listening in January alone. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for Locked On Women's Basketball, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, it's not just me. It is the incredible team over at The Next, where we cover over 100 women's basketball stories every month. TheNextHoops.com. Make sure you're following our Eric Reinston Lobel, who's been covering the Big Ten in depth and keeps writing about this team the Ohio State Buckeyes and J.C. Sheldon, who is absolutely clutch. And I say that as somebody who came through with vital free throws down the stretch and a big win over Indiana just this past weekend, doing a bit of everything. We're going to get into the shots, into the two-way star that she is. But, J.C., I want to start – with how you got here after last year. As somebody who went through the difficulties with the injuries that were limiting you, what was the hardest point as you were going through that last year, thinking through how to get to where you are now? Yeah, the thanks for having me, by the way. But yeah. <laughs> the hardest part was definitely not being able to play um, with the group we had last year. We had a really tight group, a really talented group, and having to watch you know, on the sidelines was probably the hardest part. Um, but also, in a way, being with them every day was also the part that got me through it and kind of watching their success and, and being a part of that success in a different way. I think for me, it was a huge learning experience. It was something I hadn't gone through. Um, and it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about, um, you know, how to listen to my body, how to hold myself accountable when it comes to rehab and, and kind of not overdoing it. I'm someone who loves to get in the gym, probably work out a little too much. And uh, my body caught up with me there. So I think just listening to my body and learning stuff about myself and, and like I said, keeping myself accountable when it came to, you know, the rehab I had to do, I still do it today. And, and it's, it's got me back, you know, where I am this year. The drive that makes players great. And we see this again and again, is so hard to balance with that. I know that had to be a real challenge for you. I have also heard though, for players who are missing time, it's a different viewpoint and you have not stopped going on your way through this sport where you've dominated, frankly, at every level. Do you feel like you see things differently now having spent some time, you know, on the sidelines, being able to see what, you know, coach McGuff and the Buckeyes run? Absolutely. I think, you know, like you mentioned, getting to see the game from a little bit of a different angle, um, not only our team, but other teams as well. I think, when you're when you're sitting on the sidelines, you're seeing the game from a different view, and and you notice some things you know you wouldn't notice if you were out there. So it was cool for me, kind of be able to being able to vocalize that to my teammates and kind of point out the things that they're probably not seeing. Um, and then getting healthy, I think overall it just helped me out there. You know, having that point of view, and then and then getting back out there and and using what I learned. You have used it, and and you'll have to forgive me, but we have to talk about some of the numbers that are being put up. So first of all, overall, Ohio State, 19-3, and 10-1 and one in the Big Ten, which is the toughest conference in America. I don't think there's even much dispute about that from uh, any other corners. Going out there, winning these big games, you know, whether it's beating Indiana, whether it's beating Iowa earlier this year in a shootout, uh, you know, played uh, at a lot. I, I mean, if people didn't see that game, 100 to 92, and just like the way you guys are racing up and down the court, just endlessly fun to see it. But your efficiency 
has reached the new level, even compared to what you did earlier on in your career. And for you to be hitting almost 58% of your twos, you are consistently hitting your threes again. And obviously you have always been automatic from the free throw line, but you're there at 87%. I guess the question I have is, are you with rehab somehow even stronger and a little quicker to get to your spots than you were before? I would like to think so. Um, you know, I feel, you know, just as good, if not better than I was, um, you know, before that injury occurred. And probably I do think in a way rehab has, you know, made me stronger that rehab works so many different muscles, not only the one that, you know, I injured. And um, it might be a mindset thing for me. It might be, you know, myself just telling me I feel a little better. But overall, I do think probably and I think, um, you know, it's it, like I said, it's a mindset. So if you think you feel better, you're going to feel better out there. And that's that's just kind of what I try to tell myself. <laughs> I mean, you go out there, you so you're a 5'10 guard. You're somebody who obviously has the size. First of all, you, you can uh, run an offense as needed. So you can play one, two. When you think about, and you'll forgive me, but you, you can't help but think about you at the next level every time you watch you play. You know, you can go out there and be a one, two, three, the way you know, someone like Grace Berger has done. Mm -hmm. Transition from Indiana to Indiana. And mm -hmm. so for you to be doing that as well, it involves being able to get to the rim and finish. For you to be at 70% around the rim, I mean, that's a level of efficiency you come to expect from bigs. What is it, do you think, that allows you to be such an effective finisher at the rim? And where does that come from? Like, how early does that come from? Because you had that early on in your career. Yeah, I think um, over the past couple of years specifically, I've really focused on, you know, types of finishing. There's a lot of different ways to finish, and, and that works to my benefit. I think once I do get around the rim, I think my quickness is what gets me around the rim. And then obviously the repetition and all those finishes that I've learned – um, allows me to finish at that rate. But um, I think, you know, what we do here at Ohio State has helped me a ton. Um, I've I've gotten into the gym a lot throughout my career. So just repetition, like I mentioned, and then my trainer from home, um, that's something that we've hit on, you know, repeatedly over and over. We still do today. Just something we kind of want to ingrain in my brain and, and you know, add more finishes as we go to. So it's, it's part of my game I love. It's part of the, the game I enjoy. And I think it definitely helps, especially being a three-level scorer. Um, it's really important. What, tell me what that means, types of finishes. What are those types of finishes? How do you practice them? That's so interesting to me. Yeah, so it's it's evolved. I feel like the game's kind of evolved, you know, since, geez, even since I was little. Um, now you have same foot finishes. You have the gallop finish. You have your regular finish. I feel like inside hand finish is one of my favorites. Um, open up finish. There's so many. You have the reverse layup. There's so many to even mention that people probably don't even know about, to be honest. And that's kudos to Ohio State and my trainer. But um, I think you see it in the NBA, you see it in the WNBA. Kyrie is probably one of the best people to watch. Yeah. Just the way he finishes, it's not not normal or not something that you'd see every day at, the, at even a lower level. So I think, like I said, the game's evolving and, and finishing is evolving with it, which has been kind of cool to be a part of it and kind of, you know, learn as I get older, all these new finishes and, and ways to finish at the basket. It's crazy. How much are you spending? You're talking about being a three-level scorer, and that's part of what makes you so dangerous, right? That's one area where you've seen, like, because you came in and you were a scorer from day one, but you're now north of 40% in the mid-range. You know, you look in the paint outside of the rim, you're near 50%. What does that day-to-day -day routine look like? I, you know, basically for the people at home, what goes into making a J.C. Sheldon level shooter? Yeah. Um, getting in the gym as much as I can. I try to get in at least outside of practice two times a day. Um, but I think the most important thing about getting in the gym is doing stuff at game speed. So mm -hmm. whether that's just getting stationary threes up, whether that's your mid range shot or even finishes, which I do work on every day, um, doing it at game speed is most important. Cause if I go in and, and, you know, finish at half speed, that's not making anybody better. So something, you know, throughout my high school career and college career that I really focused on is, is making them game reps and, not about the amount of reps, but kind of, you know, the quality of the reps, which um, has helped me and has helped this team this year as well. Let the record show people at home <laughs> that playing at game speed is a challenging thing when you're talking about Ohio State game speed. You guys have consistently played as one of the fastest in America and that's <laughs> different this year. But really interesting. We're going to talk a lot more about the Buckeyes, where you guys are headed. 
Uh, I don't think you are talked about enough in the national conversation. So let's go ahead and fix that more in segment two, along with your WNBA future. So back in segment two with JC Sheldon. But first, have a couple of our ads we want to talk to you about. Delighted to talk to you guys about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From supercharger, roof racks, LED headlights, you name it. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Lockdown Women's Basketball is also brought to you by Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is the biggest and easiest daily fantasy sports app. Over 3 million members are now participating with the opportunity to just play you against the numbers. You pick two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Something that they have just added is called Demons and Goblins. It's the newest and most exciting way to play at Prize Picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you extra payouts. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can also play along some of Prize Picks' favorite players, like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz. Go to the Community Plays tab under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community. How do you do it? Well, you can do it with a little bonus from Prize Picks themselves. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that is prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA, code locked on NBA. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So we are back with JC Sheldon and we are talking. Ohio State, I, I just, everyone's happy to see the way that Caitlin Clark is getting some of the spotlight. And and I would just, you know, as a, a, a point of, um, a, of perspective from here in the media, we have this feeling of Caitlin Clark is doing incredible things. As somebody who covers women's basketball every day, it is frustrating at times that it feels like there is a lone story about women's basketball being Caitlin. I, I saw her over the weekend uh, in Maryland, and it's a wonderful thing. But there were people talking to Brenda Freeze, the head coach of Maryland, saying, what is it like to coach in front of a sellout crowd? Like she'd coach in front of 30 people her whole career instead of like, no, she's won a national title. And there have been sellouts a ton in the Xfinity Center. I've been there to cover. And so I, I just from your perspective, as somebody who you're in the same league, you guys are absolutely among the teams who may well win this league, both regular season and conference tournament. And as we talked about in segment one, you guys beat Iowa head to head. How do you feel about it all? How do you reconcile it? Because it's a lot, right? We want to see the game rise, but at the same time, there's this sense that like there's a lot more to it here. Absolutely. I think, you know, Caitlin's, obviously one of many players who has brought so much attention to this game and in our conference in general. And I think it's great. I think, um, you know, more people are starting to pay attention and whether it starts with, you know, Caitlin or her angel, however they get into the game, I think people are starting to realize um, the talent in women's basketball and, and how much the game has evolved. So I think, you know, like I said, it doesn't really matter how they start watching, they're watching. So I think Caitlin's a huge part of that, and especially the Big Ten. You can see it in the attendance. You can see it in the viewers. I think everything's growing. And in a way, it's it's awesome to be a part of, and it's fun to be a part of. Because like I said, obviously, they're coming to watch her. They're viewing in because of her, and then they notice the talent that is in the Big Ten or that is in any other conference. So I think women's sports in general is growing, and no matter how that's happening, no matter where the attention is coming from, I think it's really great for everyone. I, I agree with you. All I'm saying is, 
there's a state of Ohio. I don't know if you're familiar with it, right? They're going to have a sold out final four in Cleveland <coughs> this year, Absolutely. whether Iowa makes it or not. Right. So, so this is and, and I covered the sold out final four last year and the year before and the year before that. This is uh, women's basketball doesn't need saving. It's all adding to it. But it's just it just keeps growing. And, and, and you guys are more than doing your part. And I just want to go back, if I can, to five years ago now when you made the decision to come here. And, and in a lot of ways, you know. Caitlin's homegrown in Iowa. We see this phenomenon, though, repeated, right? You can go back 20 years ago to Lindsey Whalen, homegrown in Minnesota, comes, stays in Minnesota, leads the Gophers to the Final Four. This is something of state pride that comes along with it. And I just wonder how much you feel that consistently as someone who stayed home, who, who has helped build this program even further. Again, not for the first time. We can talk about Katie Smith all day, yeah. but somebody who's taking it to the levels it is now. Yeah, it's special. It's special. I grew up in Cleveland, actually, and then moved to Columbus uh, for my high school career. But mm -hmm. um, the dream was always Ohio State. It's always the place that the team we cheer for, the place we wanted to be. And I think um, actually coming here and visiting here and getting to know the players, the coaches, in the culture, um, I kind of fell in love with it and wanted to be a part of it. And then once I got here, just, you know, elevating it to the next level and, you know, moving the culture to the next level and being able to do that, you know, with the people here was awesome and it was special. But um, it's definitely a little something extra staying, staying at home and staying close to home and, and being able to represent this place and being from here. It's special. I mean, Ohio is a really great place. Cleveland's a great city and, and so is Columbus. So I think, you know, having having experienced, you know, a little bit of my childhood in both those places and being able to still represent it today is awesome. And um, like you said, that Final Four is in Cleveland and, and going back home there for that would be pretty special. That team you played on your freshman year was a dark horse in my mind mm -hmm. to make an NCAA tournament run. And then for those listeners at home who may not remember, there was this um, worldwide plague that came along. <laughs> and so I just, when you think back to that time, right? Does it feel like so long ago? Does it feel like like a completely different time in your life? And you know, how do you kind of reconcile a college career that has ultimately spanned these five years, but included things no one else has really had to go through? Yeah, absolutely. It it was tough, I think, because it's it's so different. You know, when you do go through COVID, that's stuff we had never experienced in. Mm -hmm. And that team, I think, too, my freshman year was so different than any team we've had in here. Um, going through kind of those hardships that we had to, I think brought us a little closer, but um, in a way, I think it taught us so much, you know, you know, COVID in general and, and freshman year in general, the amount of stuff, you know, Ohio State in particular had to go through, I think just grew our culture even more and took our culture to the next level throughout the next years. And being a part of that was special. Um, obviously, we've had really great teams, you know, after our freshman year included, but even after that, and and this year, I think we have a not only a talented group, but a really special group. So I'm excited to see, as I'm sure everyone else is, I'm excited to see how the rest of the season goes. I am fascinated to see what happens. And, <laughs> and again, to that point, you made the decision. And just for our listeners to understand, despite the injuries you were dealing with last year, you would have been a first-round pick in the WNBA if you had come out. And I talked to WNBA talent evaluators who see who you are, who see what you bring into the table, and they were prepared to – draft you last year already i think you have probably improved your draft stock by virtue of being able to show everyone that yes you are healthy now and they will do that right away but can you take me through the decision to return and even just like what that moment was like when you shared that with your parents with folks take me through it yeah i think um a lot of things went into that um you know that loss um in that in the tournament that year was hard and i think more than anything, thinking about the group that, that we had in the group we were returning for the next year. We only lost one. Taylor Mikesell is the one person we lost who obviously is an amazing player, amazing teammate, and, and made a huge difference in our team. But I, I wasn't ready to let go of this group that we had and the talent we did have. And obviously, we've, we've gained some more people and some transfers and some freshmen. But we have a talented and special group. And I wanted to be a part of that and thought, you know, it, it'd be fun to lead that team and chase a championship for one more year. And obviously, like you said, being healthy definitely went in my decision too. Um, I wasn't fully healthy there to end the season, and and um, I did want to get fully healthy and you know be able to compete with these girls at, at that highest level one more year. 
I love to see it. It's exciting that it is all working out the way you're looking at. It. And mm -hmm. we do have to talk about, in addition to the dreams of this year, what the WNBA looks like, what it's meant to you, and the way in which your game just fits seamlessly. Our, our scouting department, has, I mean, we had a whole show dedicated to you back in January, had you back on the show last fall. So a lot more to talk about in segment three with Jason, J.C. Sheldon right after this. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys at home about game time. All right, let's just let's just be real about it. There are vanishing opportunities to go see J.C. Sheldon play, right? February 14th at home against Nebraska. You're home against Maryland, Michigan. At Penn State, at Iowa, we got Minnesota coming up tomorrow night, and at Michigan State. Good Lord, this league is good. Game <laughs> time offers you the opportunity to see every one of those, along with the Big Ten tournament and, let's say, up to six games. Come NCAA tournament time. What I like about game time is it gives you the opportunity not just to select your tickets, but also to see where your view takes you. So I, I have a basketball crazy younger daughter who always wants to know, all right, what is my viewpoint going to be for the game? I'm able to show her game time makes it very easy. I, you can do it too. Just download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off your first order. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. <coughs> so here back in segment three with J.C. Sheldon. And so I'm just going to read to give our listeners a sense of this. This is from our M. Adler on your impact defensively. You know, we talked a lot about your shooting, but you have a lot of the physical tools and instincts and reads that made it pretty clear you were very projectable defensively. The steals are an indicative part of that, but even just in the half court, your ability to be a really good guard defender, sticking with drivers, providing plus help defense for somebody who's spending a lot of time at the two guard spot, you're just not going to find a lot of guards who provide her level of offense and can provide her level of defense against guards. Your defense is obviously something you take a lot of pride in. What do you think? And first of all, do you agree with M that your defense has reached another level here this year? And if so, how did you get there? Yeah, I think, um, oh, geez, a lot of things got me there. My, I grew up, my, my dad was a coach all my childhood. So being a coach's kid, um, you know, both sides, you focus on both sides of the ball. You know, defense is super important all the time. But even, like I said, being a coach's kid, you never – you never, you never get a playoff offense or defensively. So that's kind of where it started. And then I think being here at Ohio State, the way we guard, the way we defend has, you know, complemented my game and, and made me better in a way. I think you guys know we play really fast. We like to press. We like to jump in those passing lanes. And and it's something I've adapted to while I'm here, and I love it. I love how fast we play. I love the kind of chaos, you know, press that we run. Um, it complements a lot of us and a lot of the way we play. So I think – that's just elevated my game as well as, you know, elevated a lot of us here. And then obviously being able to kind of having that freedom to jump the passing lanes when we do see something and, and use our quickness and explosiveness when we, you know, might see something other people might not. So I think, you know, the way we play here, I think more than anything has not only helped me, but helped a lot of people on this team. Are you conscious of the fact that there's so many overlaps between that and the way they play at the WNBA level? You know, that the W has become this fast lead. The W has become this lead where those types of skills translate so effortlessly. I just, you know, you mentioned Kyrie and obviously the NBA is, is one thing, but the W, where you're headed, you know, it feels like it's fit for your game. Just, you know, take me through how you feel that dovetails and how much you're, you're how much you've tried to tailor your game to that, I guess, is my better question. Absolutely. I've watched watched a lot of WNBA, and I think yeah. not only do we play fast here at Ohio State, I think obviously they do as well. And as much as, you know, our game's evolving, their game's evolving even more. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, people are starting to realize that too as, as the viewers grow. And like you said, that, that I don't want to say that, you know, fast pace on defense and fast pace on offense, it's absolutely already there in the WNBA. And like mm -hmm. you said, as far as, you know, going from this level to the next, 
Um, I think that is important. I think that's something that when we when you do play fast, obviously at this level, it's gonna it's kind of transition. You know, obviously not gonna be an easy transition, but I think it's gonna help help not only me but a lot of people coming you know out of college into the WNBA and and just the pace in which they play. Um, and I'm sure, you know, we'll still have a little transition when we get there, but um, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's amazing not only to be a part of, but to watch. I think, like I said, I've watched WNBA, WNBA for a while. And, and you know, recently, like you said, the pace is increasing. And it just, not only is it more fun to play in, it's more fun to watch. The pace is increasing and the pace, particularly among the teams that are reaching the semifinals and the finals. And Vegas, always among the leaders in pace. And New York played real fast this year, so 100% spot on it is also worth noting uh just for our listeners do not be fooled by opposing points per game ohio state 146th in the country it is because of pace you guys are a top 50 defense overall and in fact you're in the way in which you're able to limit people's opposing field goal percentage and force turnovers there is a lot more to defense than just opposition points per game so it's a personal <laughs> to keep in mind when people are aware of it I want to leave you with this, if I could. Like you said, you grew up in Cleveland, moved to Columbus. Uh, it is a two-hour and eight-minute drive from your high school. I ran the GPS numbers. How meaningful would it be? And have you visualized what it would feel like to be there, to be essentially having your homecoming to cap your college career? Um, it would be really special. I have visualized it. It's something I've thought about. Um, but we got we got a long way to get there. Um, this team's really good at taking it game by game, especially in the Big Ten. Um, it's really important. But, you know, we have goals. We have stuff we're striding towards, and that's one of them. And, you know, Cleveland has a special – that's somewhere I look at is home, um, where I'm from, where I grew up. I have a lot of relationships, a lot of memories from there. So going back there would be really special, having a chance to go back there and, and you know, win it for the – you know, for Columbus and Ohio would even be that much more special. So it's something we're going to work towards and, and something I'm really excited for. Building on the legacy of Katie Smith and mm -hmm. doing great things on both sides of the ball and off the court as well. JC Sheldon, we appreciate your time to our listeners. We appreciate you joining us every day. We will be back with you tomorrow. We'll be talking to Hannah Hidalgo of Notre Dame. And of course, we will be here six days a week. And there'll be shorts in the meantime, every time there's another news break about the WNBA. So until then, I am Howard McDowell wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. <laughs>